Good evening, everybody. Welcome to a beautiful evening. Welcome to Wednesday night. Welcome to Looking Deeper. And hello, Sandra Herrick. Hello, Dana. How are you? Good. Happy to be here on uh, the podcast with you again. Again. It's one of my favorite things to do during the month. It really is. It kind of wraps the whole thing up. It does. It does. Yeah. And especially this time of the year, it seems like it's always extra fun. Well, it gets cozy. It I does. may be out on the deck during the summer, but I'm always tucked in. There's a fire. I got a glass of wine. The animals are all tucked in and it's, you know, dark and intimate. And uh, yeah, the energy is very, very good. It so is. how are you? I'm good. I just got done teaching a class in the Magical Mystic Angels. Mm -hmm. which I love, and my Patreon offering uh, for the month. So two of the things that I absolutely love to do. And um, it's just been a wonderful day. Laura Smith came in today, and we did a girlfriend day and nice. just hung out and did fun stuff like go to the dime store and had a wonderful lunch together. And so it's just been a really great day. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I love it when we can uh, be festive without being loud. <laughs> <laughs> that is a really great way of putting it, being festive without being loud. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Lily. Hi, Jessica. Hey, Lady Hawk. Hey, Danny. Carla Come Joe. On. It's good to see you in the chat room. Come on in, everybody. Chat room's open and the water is nice and warm. How are you doing, Sandy? Well, I'm actually very, very good. Um, I, yeah, but I blew out my knee, and uh, well, like I was telling you just before you turn it on, there's a lot of metaphys metaphysical things happening to me since I left your place, and you know we stepped into a lot of really profound energy when we were all together again. The first time for the you know the three of us ladies, uh, not to mention our you know your family. Um, for me, it is literally almost five years. And that I've been in your presence physically and, uh, you know, back to the Enchanted Forest and to even meet Easton. And so to see how the, um, the, uh, the Enchanted Forest has grown and to sit in the, the, the classroom. I mean, a lot, just a lot of, oh, here's like we're off pause for me. I know you've been busy, you know, in your own life, but it's like all this chaos from Bobby being sick and COVID and Bobby still being sick and living, something is off pause and I'm kind of coming out and getting, oh, here's my breath. Oh, here's my life. Here's what's for me beyond all of that. And so it's, it's, it's good to kind of feel my bones stretch, but I blew out my knee. And so I, I believe it's very physical, very metaphysical. And of course, it's right on the full moon. And uh, so I'm getting healing, I'm getting massage, I'm getting loved. And I'm kind of, you know, learning how to walk again. <laughs> I was, this is a great, two great things. That I, you know, I, after I blew it out, I was, I thank God I had a walker from when I blew out all my ribs. I was in the middle of the night, you know, on my walker, rolling <laughs> to the bathroom and like how am I going to sit down how am I going to get up and roll back to the bed <laughs> like the dog is like mommy are you okay and it's like no I'm not it's like, <laughs> but it was just you know oh my god to feel that that crippling again and I I had a laugh at myself that here I am hobbling on a cane through Walmart to get up you know, Black Friday, <laughs> I started laughing at us. Oh, I got old really fast. <laughs> Aww. Hold on to that cart for dealer of life. <laughs> it's like, sit, sit, stand up. <laughs> so well, I'm fine. I'm fine. But, you know, the, the, the body slam dumped me here. But I'm good. So you, how are you after our get together and the class? And thank you for the people that came and, you know, God to sit there and, you know, co-teach with you again, gentle, sweet, and phenomenal. It was a, it was a really great weekend, wasn't it? For making the dream pillows and then into the deep conversations that we were having. 
yeah. um, about spirit. Um, it was nice to have you back in the home and back in the enchanted forest again. Me in that red bathrobe. You in your red bathrobe and on the big old red feathered sofa downstairs. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I fell asleep. It was like, oh, I know you. And the sofa really was like, I know you too. <laughs> <laughs> I love that red sofa. It loves you. Um yeah. And it was fun to go to the Botanica with you and Lily. I think that was a, a, absolutely a highlight. Um, it just felt good. And, you know, as life happens and death happens, the fact that you were both here when we were going to have to lay our beautiful horse bow down yeah. um, to have you here to, to be here to help dress him yeah and help elise because Bo was absolutely elise's best friend that was her for those of you who don't know uh we had Bo for 19 years he was elise's um, english hunt seat horse but more than that he was her best friend and her lifesaver and th we've been treating cancer within him for four years yeah four years now yeah. And right on time, the way that divine timing happens, just before Lily and Sandy got here, Elise really had no other decision to make than to let him go. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Sandy helped her with that. And we were all there to dress his mane, to braid it, and um, to be with him and to love him up. Right. And, you know, it's, it's for me when an animal tells us they're ready, we're not certain. We know, but we don't want to know. Right. We see it, but we don't want to believe it. I mean, our attachment to them is not an attachment of I need you. It's very different. It's not a neediness. It's a lifeline. It's a conduit to something that feeds each other a vitality that when it gets pulled away, it shifts us. It makes us more of who we are, even though it feels like something has lessened or been taken away. I mean, everything that Bo and Elise went through makes her more of who she is. Yes. And it is a sad reality that our animals have shorter lives than we do and so we get to have a few of them in our lives if we're lucky you know the rotation or they recycle but when we get to them we forget that they're going to die while we have them we feel it but we don't know it you know what i'm saying i do i do hey and carrie hayes welcome welcome to chat we love you too oh, hey tara, tara. It's good to have you both with us. Um, yeah. Yeah, so the passing of Bo, which was extraordinary, and thank you to everyone who, who held uh, the light for that Monday morning. Um, and he went very, very quickly once Dr. Bunn was there. And ironically, Cheryl, who, who keeps the, uh, who has the farm and does the equine rescue and, has us boarders there. She also laid to rest her bow. Uh, they went together, her bow and our bow. Um, they were famous friends out in the paddock. But you know, Sandy, one of the things I didn't mention was that after uh, Dr. Uh, Bunn was finished and Elise came home, and uh, on my way home from watching Easton, I drove by the farm one more time, and Bo and Bo were lying there um, under their blankets. And all of the horses were silent. Yes. And frozen in oh. a state of absolute mourning. Yes. Yes, they know how to grieve. They do, and they do it well. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, so thank you for being there. 
being I, here, I, you and Lily, well, I, for being here yeah. with us through that. Yeah, I appreciate it. You know, and the shock when you asked me that, you know, Cheryl, the owner, would like me to go see her horse and make a decision or to help her make a decision. It was that ext of octave. And I'm, I'm going to share this, but I feel that Bo is still inside me. When we got back in the car, and I said, can we go to a gas station? I need to wash all this death off me. And then we went to your house. I feel like Bo's leg was so distorted. And the very first time I saw him, it was like I gasped at how crooked his, his leg was from his knee down. Oh, Cheryl's um, Bo, Bo Jangles. Yeah, Cheryl, yeah. Cheryl's Bo, yeah. And... um that I feel a part of my going into his body is what's going on with my knee. And it's, we take on stuff for our animals. So, you know, I want everybody to hear that this is not something that is outside of us. The magic, the alchemy, the spirit, the ability to come in and out of the beings that we love, our energy, our frequencies, our tones, we transfer into them. It's not a projection onto them. We transfer into them and them into us. And there's an alchemy, a flicker, a conduit of energy that imprints each other. That's why we know our animals when we find them. That's why they they give us the assignment to be with them in their transition. And it's one of those things where me working with animals, there's a destiny I have with animals that I'm there at the right time for them. I don't have to be with them all the time. But like I said to you, I may not always be there, but I'm always there when I'm needed. And to know that that was my spirit, my soul's job to do, to show up for Elise, to show up for Cheryl, to show up for Bo in what I know about cancer and horses, and also to show up with Cheryl's horse with, oh my God, he's been standing on three legs for her so she could get back on her feet for how many years? Right. Mm-hmm. Right, since her pu husband passed away. Exactly. Right. Yeah. It's, you know, and, and even me saying mm -hmm. that, it's like, he, it's like I now know that he it, he and I merged so I could kind of get him off his leg so he could have the relief until I know how to heal this. It, it's, I want everybody to hear what I'm saying and the stumbling of what I'm saying is that take a look at the animals that you have or have had, or the ones, the beloveds, and Carrie, if you're listening, obviously, you know, you just lost your boy, and what is it that we take from our animals? I mean, look at Isle, for God's sakes, you can't have the combination of two of your animals all tucked into one. <laughs> My little Isla? Uh, your Isla, I mean, it's like, there's Gabriel and uh, Merlin all wrapped up into this animal. Yes. And, you know, I can see it when I walk in and it, it, it kind of looked at me and went, are we supposed to be having sofa real fast? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And it's, we live in each other. We don't mm -hmm. live next to each other. We live in each other. Mm -hmm. Do you experience that, Dana? I do. I because do. watching you hold Isla, you melted with each other. Yes, I am a, a, I am an animal lover. I always have been, and it doesn't matter if it's one of yours at Unicorn Fields that crosses right. over. Right. Kelly and Kevin lost their coda. Um, uh -huh. Lily's Gabriel. I here in the Enchanted Forest when. Someone that I love has lost one of their four leggeds or feathered friends. I'm a mess. Right. I was a mess when your chicken or turkey Phyllis died. Oh my God. Absolutely. Because I for me, when it comes to the animals, there there is such allegiance and loyalty and truly unconditional love, other than hey, when are you gonna feed me? Exactly. But there's a purity. 
there's a purity yes. to them. Yes. That is spectacular. Yes. Yes. And, and, you know, when you came here with all the animals that were here, mm -hmm. you could tell the ones that you bonded with, you could see all of them, but you could also, you know, you know, the ones that all of a sudden just jumped right into your heart. Oh yeah. Me and Oliver. Oh, good God. Me and Phyllis. So easy. Yeah. Just like so, that. Angel. Yeah. Yeah. So easy. Yeah. So easy. So it's, uh, I don't know why I got into, well, my knee got me into this and also being out there and, and knowing that, hey, okay, let's come see you. Okay, let's do this weekend. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, oh, by the way, <laughs> you know, someone calls me and starts yelling and screaming and it's like, what do you, what, 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 what do you say? What are you saying? Wait a minute. What? And it's, it just, the how the universe gets us to where we need to be right on time. Right on time is shocking. Well, yes. Even when we think we've been missing out or will it ever happen or what's going to happen or, <laughs> you know, but I want mine or where is mine? It's like it happened so on time. It was breathtaking. Well, and and let's just talk oh. about something for a moment that, you know, even though we have a spiritual practice, you and I walk the walk every day, 24 seven. Death also. Which is bad news. <laughs> yeah. Death also takes us by surprise and it, yeah. and it grabs us in, or it takes us to deep, deep sadness and uncertainty. Even yes. though you and I deal with death or the other side, call it what you will every day that doesn't exclude us from feeling sad or confused. And I think a lot of people on the spiritual side of things or metaphysical side sometimes feel guilty or bad for being sad or confused or grieving the loss of something or someone they love because well if you're spiritual why are you sad you know they've gone on well see that's my shaking my finger at the new age for simplifying everything with you know get over it or you know, be more elevated or you chose it or you created it or you're supposed to understand it eliminates so much of the fragility of being human. Yes. And or spiritual or or religious or allowing for you to honor the breath that is now different because you're no longer breathing the same air as your beloved. Their breath is not going into the air and you're not inhaling it anymore. You, their heartbeat is not in rhythm with yours. Their sounds are not collaborating with yours. The stillness of death is shocking. And I'll be honest, as far as I'm concerned, I know I can have empathy and compassion for people who pass away that I don't have an attachment to or an investment in. And I can be snagged in my own surprise of having really deep emotional experiences with people when they tell me how their beloved died. Because something is really honest in the way that they are expressing or sharing the moment of their love. It touches me. Mm -hmm. In my own, I mean, just the 28th was the anniversary of my father dying. 33 years. Mm. Wow. 33. He died at 66. That's half of his life that he's now been gone. Huh. That, that equation blows me away. And it's that place of, I don't want to be okay with someone dying sometimes. I want the privacy of feeling my own, not just vulnerability, but my own horror that I've lost something. The horror of it, the sadness of it, the cruelty of it, the shock of it. I'm not that elevated of a person that, you know, it's all okay. Let me put it this way. If they've got to go, I have to make peace with it. 
Yes. But that doesn't mean I'm peaceful with it. Yes. Elise had to make peace. And that was part of the the magic and the mystery and the healing is my work with her gave her peace of mind that the decision was to be made. But it doesn't mean that it's peaceful inside of us. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's that if someone's suffering, of course I want them to go. There's relief. But that doesn't mean it's okay with me that they're gone. Hmm. And then there's a few people like, when are they going to go? Oh. <laughs> when they really okay, they just move it on. <laughs> yeah, here's your hat. What's your hurry? <laughs> right? The cake's right there. Go for it. <laughs> and that's okay, too. I mean, it's okay to have those feelings as well. So it was really great to have you here, Sandy. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I I feel like, oh, I want details. How was it good for you? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Well, it was good to have your laughter in the house. Oh, And it was good to be sitting around in bathrobes and talking about stuff. Absolutely. It all fell right into place. Lily was one on the sofa. I'm on the other end. We both had our safe place. The dogs are running around, you know, and it's like, oh, what's different? New furniture, but nothing else. (laughs) Picked up where we left off. Absolutely. And of course, meeting Easton, when I opened up the trucks, the surprise, the fact that I didn't, you know, your your tinted windows, I didn't see it. I was like, whoa, there he is. (laughs) He was very, very happy. Oh, my God, that just took my breath away. It's like, you know, he was in utero when I was there last. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So to find this, you know, snazzy, sassy, flirtatious, outrageous kid is like, damn. (laughs) (laughs) He is definitely all of that. Outrageous. And very spiritual. I mean, he has conversations with me about his dreams. And um, all of that good kind of stuff that makes my heart happy. I think that there is a beautiful um, synergy that's happening between you and him because as his grandmother, you know, you get time with him. But because of the way that you get time with him, you're bringing him up in a way that he's in your, your frequency, in your mindset and he's so intuitive yeah well yesterday he was over Elise had to um, have some more uh, moles removed from her body and he and I were sitting on the sofa downstairs and Sonia Davis you'll love this we have two new dogs in the house we have a an English Springer Spaniel named Angus Michael and we have a little Jack Russell a uh, little dachshund got in there somewhere, and her name is Isla Skye. And they are both just as sweet and as cute as can be. Um, they love one another deeply, and we lost Gabriel, our Gabriel, in February. So anyway, Ang- or Easton and I were sitting on your red sofa in the, on the lower level, and he said, you know, Grammy, what would be even better? I said, what, honey? He goes, what would be even better is if Gabriel was here with us right now. And then we would have Gabriel and we would have Angus and we would have Isla and we would all be here. And I said, well, maybe Isla is Gabriel back in another body. There you go. And he looked at me and he said, can that happen, Grammy? I said, (laughs) it can happen. And I don't know if Elise has told him yet that his horse, Bo, uh, he got to ride Bo. Yes. Which was spectacular. That little guy on top of that 16-hand horse. Um, Yeah. Wonderful video. And I don't know that Elise has told him yet that Bo has passed. Right. Um, so I didn't bring that up, but I do believe that Bo will come back, uh, you know, in a... In a Absolutely. In That's a, what I even said to her. And I said, honey, if he doesn't go, then he won't be recycling on time. So, you know, <laughs> you got to... 
Exactly. You want to see them back, you got to let them go. <laughs> so, Sandy, when you're working with animals, because I, I mean, I'm an animal, animal lover. I'm, as Todd said to me after Gabriel passed, you know, sometimes for you, I wonder if having an animal is worth the grief that you go through. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> and at the time, you know, he said, because I've never met anyone who grieves the loss of your animals and everybody else's animals. Right. Like you do. Right. Um, but you work with animals. Yeah. And when it comes to an animal coming back in another body, like how soon can they come back or do they choose to come back? Ah, that is such a spectacular question. Okay, so I just got lit up. My whole body's lit. My heart starts to pound. I'm getting all the quivers and all this other stuff. Good. This is so beautiful. I'm going to tell you a quick story before I answer all the other things that you've asked. Um, as a matter of fact, the person that was working on my leg today, Kathy Kruger, who you've met. Oh, yeah. And who actually had knee stuff that last time we had the... the uh, uh, reading stuff. We worked with her knee from a past life, all that stuff. So, okay, she had a dog named Sky, and Sky would come here and just a gentle black lab, and on and on and on. And of course, I was not here when Sky was put down. Um, and um, Kathy and I actually even had a bit of a scuffle with each other, and so I, I we weren't talking at the time. And I reached out to her like a year later, and she goes, oh, my God, Sandy, I can't believe you're calling me today. And I said, why? She goes, because I'm going to go pick up Sky. She was put down during the winter, and because the ground is so frozen, you can't dig a grave. And so the vet put Sky in a freezer, and this was like spring, and she was going to go get her to put her in the ground. I said, Kathy, let me come and do that with you. So we went, we picked her up, we opened up the bag, we get to anoint her, heal her. It's a bond that now the dog is bringing Kathy and I back together, that there's the beauty of this beautiful being all of a sudden unfolding. And because she was frozen, you didn't smell death. It was, it, she was just sleeping, mm. sound and still. And I, I touched her, literally touched her and felt her hair and I looked at Kathy and I said she's on her way back mm. she's on her way back and Kathy was like oh my god can she I said she's on her way back you'll know well how do you know how do you know I said you'll know she'll let us know and so Kathy waited and all of a sudden her intuition was let me go find these dogs Sandy there's a bunch of puppies down in Connecticut would you go with me I said, absolutely, I'll go with you. So I go with her, and there's all these rescue puppies, like you, rescues. They just fall out of the sky, yep. literally. And um, lo and behold, none of them were a black lab. They were a bunch of, you know, wild things that had this, this, and that, and them mutts. And yet there was this brindle one that just kept jumping up and down on Kathy and licking her. And she goes, how could I tell? There's so many puppies. And it was. It was a litter of puppies. So I stepped back from Kathy and all these dogs. And I swear on a book of holiness, I literally said, Sky, whichever, who you are, go sit. And before I finished sitting, saying what was in my head, the brindle ran across the yard and went and sat on the steps. Because I was saying go sit on the steps. Wow. That door, and it was only a, what, eight week old, nine week old puppy. Wow. And it sat on the steps and looked at me and shook its body and wagged its tail. Like it's me. It's me. And so Kathy is like happy with all these dogs all over. And I said, Kathy, there's sky. And she goes, are you sure? And I said, let me tell you why. <laughs> and she goes, I'm hoping it was her. So she even had an instinct. And, you know, here we are years later, and Kathy and I were just talking about how Sky goes, literally, is is her mannerisms, a different looking dog, a different uh, breed of dog, and yet Sky's essence and personality is in her. Wow. 
absolutely in her. And so the answer to some of the questions that you say is a spirit of an animal can transcend into a living being and become a blend of its soul. So if it dies this day, it can go right into another animal and share the beauty of it. How I know that is when I was in Santa Fe, Olympia, that was one of my favorite black and white cats, got run over and she died in my arms. And her and Jitterbug were the best of friends. And I and Jitterbug were so, so, so shocked and so in grief. It was the whole was evident. And my uh, horse trainer at the time said, we'll just go get a new cat. No, I can't get a new cat. <laughs> you know, get, and, and, and it was like, well, you know, the hole is really big and jitterbug is not doing well. And so I said, okay, here's the deal. I'll go. And if there's a black and white long haired cat, and if it's mine, it has to come up to me. I got to the Humane Society. I went through the door and it had a little glass mirror, a window in it, you know, just at the head. I opened it up and pushed it all the way open and it hit the cages where the animals were. And this little black and white cat with long hair came flying right up to the window and looked right at me and I went, too fast. <laughs> that was just too fast. Mm -hmm. And so I went in, I opened cages, I looked at everybody, and that black and white had its pull out, like, wait a second, come back here, wait a second, come back here. And I even took a couple of cats out, and come on, you know, picked them, and it's like, and that one, like, pressing its face up against the cage, it's like, you said. And then finally, I opened up the cage, and it literally just crawled right up my arm, into my arms, and just, I went, oh my God. And what I knew, once I held that cat, was that Olympia was already in it. Wow. He, he did not replace the cat. He shared the space with the cat. Because that kitten, and when I took it to the vet <clears throat> instantly, they were angry at the Humane Society for even letting me have it because this, he said, this, this kitten's too young. You shouldn't have it. And it was like, yeah, but it was right on time for me, right on time mm -hmm. for Olympia, right mm -hmm. on time for Tuxedo. Yeah. And there's that, that the, the universe was doing something out of the space of we have to follow the rules to, no, we've got to get into each other's mm -hmm. arms. Mm -hmm. And it was in literally three days of Olympia passing. Mm -hmm. And then how I knew that it you know really was Olympia in the sharing was that Jitterbug was like I don't think so I don't know about this and she was so honorable to Olympia dying she wouldn't come into the bed and I was house sitting at the time so there was nothing familiar she didn't come into the bed she she would sleep on a chair at the door of the bedroom and just kind of like oh yeah so how I got them, how I got them, how I got Jitterbug to love Tuxedo was I poured half and half on his head <laughs> and brought Jitterbug over. And she was like, I'm just rather if you're old, old, well, I better lick this off. <laughs> All that half and half cream off of his, I love that. And they were inseparable. Mm -hmm. And it's like, as soon as Jitterbug really got the scent, licked it, and we got Jitterbug for Olympia. Aww. And now we got Tuxedo for Jitterbug. <laughs> Their bond is what was significant. Yeah. More so than the bond to me. Their, that makes me want to cry. Yeah. Their bond to each other kept its promise. Well, that's how, as you know, Angus and Isla are. Um, um, so Sonia is in the chat room, and you remember the first time you met Sonia. She had some of her beautiful elderly um, dogs in her van yes. when yes. We, we taught a class in Oxford. And um, uh, Sonia, I just want to, 
I'm glad you're on here tonight because um, I went one time to watch Hurricane compete in Grand Rapids. Smartest dog in the world. Unbelievable. Smartest dog in the world. Yes. And I went to watch him compete in Grand Rapids. And so when I've had pets, they've just been, you know, pets. They're not competitors. They're just, you know, whatever they are. And one of the things that I learned from Sonia that I am utilizing, one of her teachings was about crates because I never thought to use crates with my other right. dogs because that wasn't something that I grew up with or in my realm of knowledge. And so Angus and Isla both have their uh, crates and they're both crate trained, they're potty trained. It's, it's a wonderful thing. Um, and so I just want to thank you for that, Sonia, because you taught me about that while we were at the training and all the dogs were in their crates and I asked you about the crates and you taught me about those crates being their little dens and that they felt safe and secure in them. And so thank you for being here because I want to thank you for that. So here's, here's a question, Sandy. Do you think that animals could possibly at one time have been humans? Yes. And why do you think that? Because I know that. Okay. <laughs> And I think humans can go into animals and animals can go into humans. It's the elevation and the elevation of the vibration and the frequency and the DNA and the intelligence of spirit where Native Americans and other cultures that literally shapeshift. Yes. And that, you know, you take a look at the animals that are, you know, carved into the stones in Egypt that are half human, half uh, animal, that there, there's the soul. I know that I have feline energy in me. I don't. My body, if I crawl on the floor, the way my ribs are, the way my body is, I am feline. I have cat energy. Everybody's always said I have cat eyes. There's this thing. And there's a place inside me that is so comfortable with the way I operate in that feline energy. I know that I have been a mountain lion. I know I've been a panther. The only time that, you know, when Bobby said, well, I'd like to get you a tattoo for your bat. Oh, no, when I said, I know what I want for my 58th birthday. And he goes, what? A tattoo. And he goes, what? I said, of a, a panther. It's, it's like there's something. I think it's about our souls being here longer than humanity. Mm. That we are star people. We're star beings. We're star entities. We're the dust and the, the molecules of everything that got created here. So for us to be able to start out as something in the micro, in the microcosm of, you know, what it means to be an animal, because that's all there was. And as an animal to navigate the terrain, to navigate what do we eat, how do we eat, uh, how do you how do you even make a hearth or a cave? Or I believe in my heart that our animalistic, our feralness, learned that from the intelligence of being animals. Mm -hmm. I remember once having lunch with my brother Guy Dullknife, <clears throat> and I we he and I were I think we were having like a piece of cake at an event on the reservation. And I said, so brother, you know, what do you believe about what happens to us after we die in our human form? What then what happens? And he said, well, the teaching, the Lakota teaching anyway, is that you immediately, immediately go into another body, but it's a small creature. Wow. And he said, so you could come back immediately as a bumblebee or a fly or a dragonfly. And then you become like maybe a bird. And so you, he said, you recycle four times. And then you come back as human if you choose to come back as human. 
And wow. so I said to him, you know, because some people believe that if you see a cardinal, that that's a messenger from a loved one, that they are with you. Other people believe that that's your loved one looking at you right. through the window. And right. he said, I believe that that's actually your loved one looking at you through a window. I believe that. Yeah. I believe that because it's like how many sparrows or the car or the butterflies or, you know, it's like all of a sudden there's something hovering around us. Yeah. So, you know, it's it it doesn't make sense. It validates the phenomena of how we're visited. Yes. It really validates the phenomena of it. Yes. And we get captivated with like, oh, my God, look, 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 is it them? And they don't just say hello. They make us giggle and laugh again and remind us we're not alone. Yes. Well, right after Bo passed away three weeks ago, um, Elise came home um, and she took a video of a bald eagle circling above her house. Exactly. Yeah, she showed it to me. Oh, she did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was like, uh, she goes, uh, look. Yeah. Look. Of yeah. course, look. Yeah. And I'm, I, you know, growing up, my kids would like roll their eyeballs when I would tell them stuff or give me the stink eye or, you know, the side eye. But I'm, I am happy that now as they are adults that they understand. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, they've experienced it. Yes. You know, being told something is one thing. Right. Experiencing something is the validity of its own truth. Right. And then once you experience it, you can have a negotiation about how you feel about it or what you want to believe about it. But the witnessing of the experience can't be denied. Yes. And there is phenomena so beautifully present around us always always that part of the magic of being an animal or having that animal instinct is that we were way more in tune with the elevated instincts of sight sound taste and what it means to be an animal and have to be attentive because your prayer prayed upon right. yes and so people are like that too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's noticed. And it, it, here's an example. I just forgot about it until this second. A deer sacrificed itself, landed on my car. I did not hit this deer. This was just around my birthday. I'm struggling with, okay, Bobby, what are we going to do? What are we going to We kind of have to get life back in our, 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 our lives. It's like, you know, something has to, something has to be next after this cancer and this scheme after your life. It's like, how are we going to figure out who we are now? Who's, who's your stem cell? Who, who am I? There, there, we have to start playing. It can't just be, are you okay? And we got into my car and we were going in one direction and it was like, oh, what we wanted to do wasn't going to happen there. And I said, well, let's go, you know, Peterborough, let's, let's go to Peterborough. And I was going down 12 and we're talking and it's about planning happiness. It was about literally asking for something young and free and live again. And as I'm driving out of, nowhere there is this four-pronged deer in mid-flight and I just go oh it wasn't standing in the road he had leapt over the guardrail so elegantly in flight and landed on my hood that I didn't have to put on the brakes there were people behind me people on the side I just drove to the side of the road and stopped and he felt he rolled off, but we looked in each other's eyes mm. and saw each other. And that's that shock of like, why, 
why? And I could feel his heart come into me, but I could feel my heart go into him. We merged. And our eyes are like, oh my God, you just, you just sacrificed yourself here. Hmm. What, what are you giving me? What, what, what? And off to the side of the road, he snapped his leg. So there was no way to recover. And I actually don't think that there was any other damage than his leg. If he didn't break his leg, he could have made it. And that it was new and young. And he actually, in his adrenaline, got himself out of the the side of the road, underneath the guardrail, slid down the hillside, across the road, into the woods. And, I mean, in that moment, in those moments, our neighbor was behind us before within 30 seconds. And I just looked, I said, oh my God, would you take Bobby and the dog home? Yes. Um, One of my students' daughter drove by and said, oh, that's Sandy. They called 911. We were surrounded by help out of the ether of nothingness. Bobby was taken home. The dog was taken home. The police were already on their way. The deer found its refuge into the woods, you know, some lady behind us was now like, are you going to take it home? It's like, you know, because in New Hampshire, you could take it home for me. And it was like, what do you, what do you want for to go? You know, this is mine. You don't mm. leave us alone. And I coveted it. And it's that place of, I wasn't going to miss out on what it was giving me. So I stayed there. Two police come. Do you want to get in the car? We're going to go find it. And it's like, no. I want to hear it. I want it to hear me. Well, I want to, I said, I do, I do mysticism. I'm, I'm going to be with it. And they just looked at me and they said, okay. It took three shots to kill that deer. Mm. It struck my heart so hard. I am wailing and sobbing on the side of my car, on the side of the road. And I believe that that I know that that wailing was the wailing for something that's been in my life for years and years and years and years. Mm -hmm. And it's not done yet. And when I came and my car was like, Oh my car, like what, this is the car that I'm supposed to drive off into the sunset with. And what it, it, it gave it, they didn't, they didn't total my car. The, the way the cops said, oh, I think it's going to be okay. You didn't total it. It just crushed the top. It did, it did $13,000 worth of damage that I have now new in my car. Wow. And so it's this, this beautiful being also opened up something in my sight. I came home, and anybody that's seen on Facebook, this painting that Lily has commissioned me to do, all of a sudden has colors in it that was not there before, has a sky in there that I sat down and I went, I want to paint through the eyes of this animal. Mm. It's different. And now I'm even thinking maybe it's leg two, the knee, that it broke it. It snapped its knee right in half. Ah, that's the knee. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just got a gut reaction here yeah. that, you know, the, 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 I don't know, but I do know. I'm telling you the story that this phenomena of a deer landed on me mm-hmm. and brought me medicine. Yes. Yes. Well, and you know, in, in, the, in the teachings it. of spirit and animals, and I've seen firsthand... Uh, uh, Chasha Wakan, medicine man, become a wolf right in front of my eyeballs. Yes. And it's one of those experiences that if you've not ever seen it actually happen, it's hard to understand. But we started this conversation about feeling in one another with our animals. Right. And I remember back then when I was asking the question of my then teacher, 
how does that happen? Does it happen? What is that like? And he said, well, I will show you. Whoa. And (laughs) it's one of, again, it's one of those things that you have to see it to believe it. Right. And he walked off and what was there next walking back was a, I guess you would say it was a timber wolf. And it just stood there. He just stood there. Right. And it walked off and he came back and he said, did you see it? Right. And I asked him, so how does, how does that happen? Right. How did, and he said, you have to become one with, you have to become it. It's like the right. rain dance. Right. They're not out there praying willy-nilly for rain. They become the right. rain. Right. If you if you need rain, if there's drought in your lawn or in your area, you don't pray for rain, you become the rain. Right. Which I've done here. Right. Right. Yeah. So it's a shift of energy. What you were talking about earlier, it's a shift of energy and yes. realities. Yes. One time he and I were driving up to Bear Butte. And he said, when we get there, when right when we get there to Bear Butte, there's going to be a big buck. And I said, Like, right when we get there, he said, right when we get there, there's going to be a big buck. And I said, well, how do you know that? And he (laughs) said, because I'm already asking him to be there. Right. And by golly, when we got there, we drove up, we drove into the parking lot. And right there, standing in the parking lot was a big buck. Right. And then when he came to my home... (laughs) Merlin, you know, he was a Yorkshire Terrier, so they're kind of yippy yappy, which really bothered him. And he said, I'm going to watch me communicate with your dog. And Merlin was, he was sitting on my kitchen table and Merlin was yip, yap, yap, being a Yorkie. And all of a sudden he sat on his hind behind and he was absolutely silent. Wow. Wow. And I said to him, what are you doing? And he said, I just told your dog to shut up. But I didn't, I didn't put it quite like that. He said, and, and Merlin was quiet during this conversation and just staring at him. And he said, now I'll ask him to talk again. And he got really quiet. And all of a sudden Merlin let out a couple of barks and he walked out of the room. And I said, how did, how did you do that? And he said, I became like him so that we could talk the same language. Wow, exactly. Those are really great teachings. Yes. And the phenomena is that he would be familiar with being the animal so that he could transcend into, transform into, and remember the DNA of that inside himself. Yes. And become it for the animal to understand it also. Yes. And, you know, we travel with animals. I I remember when he had, he had a horrible heart attack and he told his eldest son that if this ever happens to me, you need to call her so she can come and find me. Right. And I got this phone call, auntie, this is what happened. And he wants you to go find him. He wanted me to find him in that in-between space. Right. Call him home. Yeah. And so, but I don't ever go alone. I don't, I don't ever go into those spaces without my animals. The the right. ones that I walk into, you right. know, with that <clears throat> beautiful wolf and that beautiful raven who are tattooed on my back. Right. Um, because whether they're supernatural or they are natural here or both, because they come and they go and they, they show themselves to us. Right. They have such a wisdom about the liminal spaces. I mean, I don't, I don't go anywhere if I'm doing any of that kind of work without the animals with me. Do you? Right. No, 
No, I mean, and that's why I had cats and horses. You know, dog I grew up with, but they weren't mine. They, I favored them. They favored me, but they were not mine. They were, you know, the family dog or my brother's dog. But I was the one that kind of had the magic with them and would train them and like, look what we could do. And they listened to me. And I was there when they died. Again, you know, yeah. I stayed home from art school and the German shepherd passed away and in my arms. And, th- you know, I'm the one that finds the dog in the pool because it. I just I'm the keeper of that space. It's just the way it is with me. And so there's that space of when an animal is going to just like with your daughter and with Cheryl. I get called to, will you be with me or be with them as they go? And I never said no. And it's not something that I know I did. It's something I discovered that's inside me that gets done. Yes. And it's, I didn't know I had the courage to do that. I didn't know I had the capacity to do that. But I was there and witnessed the experience of my being there. And what, see, there's the goosebumps on my goosebumps. And and the capacity that's in me to do that. Mm -hmm. Or even that somebody would know it of me and assign me to myself to do it. Yes. And I mean that. Listen to what I just said assign me to what I they know I'm supposed to do that I may not know and they give me the assignment that is mine to do Mm -hmm. and so I discover it it's a discovery Mm -hmm. and also with all the animals here I've actually been with a vet where it was finally like you better give it more medicine I even said to one of them it was with um one of our alpaca it was with Ben that was the mightiest of mighty of mm. alpaca. And he was fasting. He was in seizure. And she wasn't giving him enough. And on the third shot, and she goes, he's so strong. And I looked at her, if you don't kill this animal this time, you're, I'll get the fucking needle to you. It was, do your job. Mm-hmm. No more than me at this point. Mm-hmm. Because I can be with this animal but he needs to stop. And, and that's what happened with Silver. When the doctor was like, still take it down. I said, put him down. Stop this. Enough. Mm-hmm. And he looked at me and went into seizure. And it was like in that moment, I claimed it was time. Because he was looking as like, put me down. Mm-hmm. Put me down. Mm-hmm. I'm going down. Yeah. And then what Bobby did to help that doctor to put him out was unbelievable because silver fell and Bobby was underneath him now under his neck. We had to get, and it was like, there's that space of when humans don't do their job, when they don't take the mercy, Mm -hmm. it's actually more cruel than the thought of it's cruel to kill your animal. You're not killing your animal. No, you're releasing you them. Kill your, exactly. Yeah. They and and that was so beautiful because even Bo did that with Elise, where it was like I'm visiting the other side already. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Leave me alone a little bit. <laughs> I'm over there. You know, come visit me over here. Don't ask me to be here. Exactly. And she she did say that in less than three seconds he was he was gone. Absolutely gone. Absolutely gone. And that, and that was one of the moments where I was able to say to her, what from my experience with Razzle, I said that when Razzle was going, the vet, I mean, I looked at him and he had a needle in his hand that was low. And I just looked and I said, Roger. And he goes, we don't cheat here. Mm-hmm. And he put that in and she was gone before she hit the ground. Yeah. And I was able to say that to Elise, like, if you got to do it, he will be gone. Be, it's, it's. The kindness is so generous. Yes. And we grieve. Yes. Tremendously. Silver went out of his mind when he saw Razzle down on the ground. Mm -hmm. Out of his mind. Mm -hmm. He tried to kick her up. He got his, he bit her halter and picked up her head. 
He bronked and screamed because he saw that she was. I mean, they too grieve. Mm -hmm. Well, and that was why it was so important on Sunday that we brought Lectus into the writing arena. Yes. To say goodbye to Bo because they had always been together. And so she would have her moment of saying goodbye. But the wisdom of her was, well, this, this ain't the end. So goodbye for now. Yes. Um, and so we learn so much from, from animals in that way. It's goodbye for now, for, for now but I'll be seeing they you. They know more than us, yes. Yeah, they do. And yet their honesty is so beautiful. Yeah, tremendously. Yeah. So here we are, and I don't know, you know, I do believe that little Isla Sky is Gabriel and Merlin combined because that's what she looks like. And, and um, acts like. And acts like, <laughs> right? And she's herself also. Yes, in her little leopard sweater. <laughs> um, right. But I do believe that animals, they guide us in the dream world. They guide us in the healing and medicine world as seers. Um we are with our animals, and I believe that sometimes our totem animals, or call them power totem, whatever you call them, they incarnate. Yes. And they do the work while they're with us, like Dominic, yes. my cat. He definitely does a lot of work. Yes. <clears throat> and I'm not particularly, a, I'm a dog person. I love my cats, but I'm a dog lady. I love cats, of course. But they do their work while they're here. And, you know, it's interesting. Years ago when I was learning how to pour sweat lodges, um, somebody let their dog come near the Inipi out on the reservation. And my teacher at that time said, take that dog out of here and was really agitated about it. And I said, why did why did you tell them to do that? And he said, animals are pure. And these lodges are for healing and if they are around they will take on right whatever people are releasing inside that NEP those animals will take it on and they'll become sick right so you don't let them around those spaces right he he, he just said they're pure and that's why you know <clears throat> in the uh, sundance tradition at least in the heoka and and i've been there when a dog has been sacrificed and my teacher said, yeah, you need to go up on the hill and be with Rosella. She's doing something you need to see. It's part of your what you need to know. And, you know, weeks prior to that, I had been out on the res and I fell in love with a little white snowball. Looked like Gabriel um, out on the res. And, oh, my God, I love that dog. And I said to him, I just love this little dog. What's its name? Snowball. Oh, Gee, I wouldn't mind taking that one back to Michigan. Oh, no, you're not taking that back to Michigan. Well, when I went up the hill before Sundance, Rosella, who was a medicine woman, oh, she was a badass, too. Let me just tell you that right now. Um, she was, she had Snowball. And Snowball was sacrificing his life with the belief the understanding that dogs are so sacred, so sacred, that the meat of their body heals all things. And I walked up and I looked and I thought to myself, what am I witnessing? That is snowball. That's snowball. And the other side of my mind is, yeah, but you ate a hamburger on your way here. What's the difference? Right. And then my mind was like, I'm watching like a sacred sacrifice. And I looked at her and I said, I I will bear witness, but I can't help you with this, but I will bear witness. And then the third day of the sun dance, when they do the kettle dance and the kettle dance, for those of you that, you know, know anything about Heoka or you're wondering about Heoka, um, the the dog skull is boiled in the in a kettle, and it's boiled right out there in the middle of the Sundance grounds. <clears throat> and the medicine, the Heoka medicine man or medicine woman that's able to reach into that 
boiling pot of water and grabbed the skull, which happened to be Rosella that time because she was an amazing, amazing medicine woman. But the elderlies and anybody with a severe sickness got in a line, in a line to have some of the meat. Wow. And it was like Holy Communion. Right. And then I understood. Right. I understood that it was literally a sacrificial lamb that went willingly. It was so, right. it was peaceful. Let me just say right. that the, the, that moment was very beautiful, sacred, and peaceful. And it was very clear to me that Snowball understood Right. I mean, it was really something, Sandy. Clearly, I've never forgotten it. And it was many, many years ago. Well, again, you know, dogs were food for many centuries. Yeah. And still are to many cultures. And it's that place of knowing what is it that even cannibalism, you know, where there are cultures that if they take the brains of their ancestors yes. and cook them and drink them that they would be then drinking the wisdom. Yes. The intelligence. We are a very, very, very limited <laughs> white group of people. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. The Americanized Christianity that was like, well, you don't touch it. You don't go, you don't go. You know, they have eliminated the guttural, feral, who hunts who. Right. Who fights who. Right. What magic do you honor? I mean, the Native American that would bite the heart of a buffalo right. so that you read as right. it was still feeding, right. that you honor what it is that feeds you. Well, I remember that night after all of that happened. And that night there was a UEB. A house ceremony, and it was Leonard Crow Dog. It was Crow Dog that was doing the UEP. And I've been in a lot of ceremonies over the years. I've never experienced anything like Leonard Crow Dog in a UEP, which means they tied him up. But after <clears throat> that ceremony of blessing to bless all the, the sun dancers that would participate, um, we were having dinner, and dinner was snowball. Amazing. And I remember saying to myself, self, you need to get over yourself. I mean, right. I have this great big long dialogue with me. You can't just eat only the green beans and the potatoes. Right. Because your greatest honor will be taking in the being that you watched quietly, gently. It was extraordinary. I've never done it since. I'm glad that I had the experience. And then, you know, in later years, as the years go by, you think to yourself, but what if all the chickens and the cows and experience something so beautiful and so honorable before they become a Culver's, you know, butter burger? Right. Um, and that energy, that, that essence lives on. It's that beauty of exactly what you said. If I ingest it, am I honoring it? Yes. Or am I greedy and telling it, it needs to give itself to me? Or do I thank it for sharing itself with me and I to it yes. that I will continue its life in me? Yes. I mean, the deer that hit my car, I'm continuing its life within me. Yes. It's a part of the mystery of out of all the people in the world driving down that road, I had to turn the car, make a U-turn to get there, be there right on time for our hearts to meet, our eyes to meet. And 
I had to really go through the, oh my God, I'm going to lose my car. Am I going to lose my car? This, this is, this is my car. Right. And I mean, it's a bigger story than really I can say here, but it was like, even when I had to blame my car, let it go and yet say, no, it's my car. I will do what it takes to honor that this car and I are one. Mm -hmm. It's not about I'm going to get together in a car. Right. This is my car. This is my, this is my horse. This right. is my horses. Yeah. Well, you know, and I'm one I, of those people that picks worms up that look like they're drying out on the driveway. That's what a sap I am. And a couple of weeks ago, I was in Elisa's house and it's getting cold. So there was a big old wolf spider. And I said, Easton, he goes, yes, Grammy. I said, we need to, re <laughs> we need to rescue a spider. He said, oh, because I've taught him how to pick up worms and put them in the grass. Right. And so I said, I'm going to get a glass and a piece of paper. I'm going to get the spider into the glass and we're going to take it outside so it can be with its friends. Okay, Grandma. So I got this big ass wolf spider into this cup and I took it outside and he, I said, now you open the door. That's your part of this whole thing. Okay. Oh, look, grandma, it's going to be with its friends. I said, isn't that something? He said, yeah, that's pretty happy. I said, it is happy. Well, you know, you know, Matthew, you married Elise and Matthew. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. <laughs> is a hunter. He hunts and he and I have talked about how to honor that. And, and they eat the meat. I mean, they, yeah. they, their freezer is full of it. <clears throat> None of it goes to waste. Right. But he said to me after that, he said, Grammy, I said, yeah, honey. He said, I told my dad, I'm not going to shoot a big buck. I said, you did. He said, Grammy, I don't like that. Uh, I said, well, what did your dad say to you when you said you're not going to shoot the big buck? He said, well, he looked at me, Grammy, and he said, Easton, that's okay. You don't have to. Daddy does because that's what we eat. I said, well, how did you feel about that? He said, I feel good because, Grammy, I don't ever want to do that. Wow. Well, well, and kudos to Matt for saying, well, okay, that's okay. I recognize that that's not you. Rather I, than I, any and son of mine, you are going to go out hunting with me. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, if I kill it, you eat it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Interesting. What I, think, what I think we're really talking about here is the magic of the mystery that yes. is still so much bigger than we allow ourselves to understand yes. it. I say that to Sonia directly with the magic you have with your dogs, the yes. companion, the family, what you teach and them. Cats. And cats. And cats. She has I a herd of cats. Them. Yeah. It's, it's like, you know, you are, you are a species and you have trouble being a human being because you are a species. Yeah. I am a lone wolf <laughs> and I'm a cat, you know, mountain lions, they live by themselves there. It's like, and I've gone to the mountains. I, I can't even believe how a girl from Norwalk, Connecticut could go to the mountains to live the way I've lived in the mountains and alone and to prowl. And there's that place of, I want us to become safe again with our wild knowing. Yeah. I like that. And because there is something feral, there is something wild, there is something primal mm -hmm. that I think is necessary for us to come back to because we're getting so detached from even being human. Yeah. And I mean, the, the stuff that's coming on with AI now, I mean, <laughs> there's transfer they're putting us into the ai that they're saying they can get our brain into an ai yes so they're for your brain can live forever in an ai right and it's like i don't know if i want that right well you know when i was in georgia last month 
And I spent part of the time up in the Georgia mountains uh, with relatives on my biological mother's side. They're all horse women. And their father came here from Germany and he was a horse man. So they, they come from a long line of horse women. Um, and we had this, and, and the young lady that joined us is a, she breaks horses or she trains them, I should say, domesticates them. Um, even to the point of she's somebody who will drag herself behind a horse, right? She's that intense with it and just amazing young lady. But anyway, having said all of that, we got into this conversation about, well, why don't you, my cousin Johnny didn't necessarily always ride her horses, but Corey has always ridden horses. And so we got into this conversation about riding horses versus horses as medicine. Right. I don't ride heaven. I've ridden her a couple of times when you're around. I've ridden heaven. Yep. Yeah. But that's not heaven's purpose. Heaven is a conduit between here and the other side. She knows a lot of stuff. Right. So when I'm out there with heaven and I have questions about the other side, she tells me stuff. Right. So sometimes our animals literally are just meant as a bridge. That's their job. Right. Absolutely. And rather than just throw them away because she doesn't like a regular saddle on her, Sometimes we have to find out what they're all about. Oh, oh. <laughs> that was me and Razzle. Razzle was like, if you don't learn uh, uh, who I am, you don't deserve me. Yeah. You yeah. can't teach me something. I'm your teacher. And she was clear Yeah. that if I did not honor who she was and kept trying to teach her to be something that I wasn't scared of, it was like, don't waste your time keeping me. Right. Don't even waste your time keeping me. Yeah. And she was my greatest teacher. Yeah. In, in, in ways that I didn't even need, I didn't know I needed to be taught. And to prove a point, um, Jitterbug and Razzle are the two animals that I actually heard them call my name. Yes. Jitterbug said my name one night and I woke up and looked at her. I've never heard my name said like that, mm -hmm. sound like that. Yes. And the amount of love that was in her voice that went into me. Right out loud. Right out loud. Yes. Yes. And it was because she was gazing at me and called me to myself. Yes. Gabriel did that to me, my little Gaby. One really? night I woke up and I heard mama, mama. I've got to go potty, Mama. I've got to go now. And I thought, well, that doesn't sound like Dane. And I no. woke up and I looked over and there was Gabriel. He was probably two years old looking at me. Yeah. And I thought, you've got to be kidding me right now. Am I hallucinating? And I heard it again right out loud, Mama. Yeah. I've got to go now. And I thought, well, that's kind of a little Southern accent, but okay. Exactly. Yeah. Sonia is sharing in uh, the chat room. I'm going through this with my uh, Sheppy, Zenia. Zenia. She is yes. teaching me so much. I'm finally accepting her for who she is. Exactly, Sonia. Yeah. And that struggle's been with the two of you all along. Yeah. Until And, and Razzle was the same thing. She looked me right in the eye and said, I will not be your animal. Right. I am your companion. Yes. And it was like, oh my God. And as soon as I took the saddle and the bridle off and got on bareback with a lariat, yep. it was Velcro. And yes. before that I was thrown and tossed and kicked and run. And it was like, oh my God, I can't ride this horse. So the other <clears> thing <throat> with Razzle, when I say an animal called my voice, I was living in Montana in the middle of the mountains and it was a full moon. And little did I realize it was an Aurora Borealis and again, it was like, Sandy, come find me. Yeah. Like what? And again, the softest, Sandy, come find me. Right out loud. Right out loud. Yeah. And I pulled it up and there's a hair standing up right now. Yeah. And I mean, it was like, I knew at that point it was Razzle. Yeah. Because the vision was, she's calling you. Yeah. 
without a doubt, I got, I quickly put my bathrobe on, got the flashlight, and sure enough, went out to the barn, out to the field, there's silver, and there's no razzle. Yeah. And it's like, oh my God, did she die? Did she? And there I am, barefoot, running through the field, and she's down in the gully, laying there. Mm. And I went to her and just slid to her, and you know, razzle, razzle, she lifted her head, and she was able to get up. She called because she needed the extra energy between us to get her up. And that's the first night I found the cancer on her. She had the size of a grapefruit on her chest. And that story is blown. blown. And there I went, I ran back to the house. I got, I got her to the, to the um, barn area, tied her up, went to the house, got compresses and in the aura borealis blue and green, my white horses were blue and green shimmers. I'm in the middle of the the, the, the mountains yep. all by myself in the moonlight, and you just do it. Yes. You just do it. Yes. There's no fear. There's no doubt. There's no, wait a minute, what do I do? You just do it. Yes. Hold her warm water to compress her. And that was the next revel revelation of what is she going to teach me? A lot. Yes. So our intuition is is deeper than we know it is. And their voices are louder than we believe them can be. Yes. That's a good how way to put it. Yeah. How many times do they call us and we don't know it? But right. we hear it and, you know... It, Alfie, I mean, we have this game. I can think of him in, within I a minute. I love like, Alfie. <laughs> he's curled up right here next to me. And, of course, let's talk about reincarnation before we leave. There is no way Ralph is not my dog. From right. Me being a loser. And, and, you know, I know I've been black, and she knows I was black with her. She was not the one who hunted me. She was sent out to hunt me and kept on coming with me. Yeah. And I, I, it, it just brings the hair up the back of my neck because it was like that dog and I got to the north. Yes. And the way that she and I are, she's Bob, Bobby is her toy. I am, she and I are something. Yeah. That I, I, I don't want to even say I know what it is because I would limit what it is I'm learning. Yeah. That's how big the expanse is. Yeah. Well, growing up for me, I, when I was younger and we lived <clears throat> on the Hawaiian Islands, I had a dachshund named Princess or Duchess, excuse me. <clears throat> and Kelly, you'll remember Big Red <clears throat> when we moved to Minnesota. I had an Irish setter named Big Red. And with both Duchess and Big Red, I came home from school one day and they were no longer there. No warning, no, just where, where's red? Where's Duchess? Well, they weren't well. So we had to, you know, take them to the vet and and take them to the vet and what? Well, they weren't well, so they passed away. And I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't, I knew, you know, you know, you know, but my point in looking at Angus, who is, he's a pure blood, English Springer Spaniel with all the feathers and all that good stuff. And I see my red, big red. Wow. And when I look at my little Jack Russell with a dachshund longer body, (laughs) my little rescue girl, Isla Sky, I call her Isla May. She has Duchess's body and Merlin and Gabe. And I've sat there and I've looked at her and and I will find myself calling her Gabriel because she has his coloring. And she'll come to me, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think to myself, geez, did my inner child call them all back? Can they all be in there? All three of them? And, and, you know, I think after our conversation tonight, it's possible. I, I would say it's a definite. Yeah. And the homogenizing of it is goes right back to the question, can the soul, how fast? And, yeah. Because it's 
collaborating. Yes. It's integrating. Yeah. Think about DNA. I'm my mother, my father, my great-grandmother, my great-great-grandfather. You know, there's photographs of my great-great-grandparents, and it's like, that looks just like my brother and me. And yeah. it's like, who's, who's, what side, and who, uh, it's like, and, and our mannerisms, yeah. our mannerisms are our mannerisms because we have inherited them from our DNA, not that we have developed them. Right. By, I think I'll move my hand like this. No, this is the way my hand moves because, well, you just like you had so and so or da 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 da. Oh, you, you, you sound just like it's because that's. That's who I am. I am the essence of all these beings. Yeah. Yes. They're in my blood. Yes. That's how I felt about the first time that I saw Angus. <clears throat> Never had an English Springer Spaniel, obviously. But yeah, Kelly, Kelly is saying yes. Big Red, he was absolutely beautiful Irish setter. And I said to myself, is it possible well, the next time we went to pick Angus up at his school, <clears throat> he was standing out in the schoolyard right next to what? A beautiful male Irish setter. Of course. And I walked in and Stephanie, who runs the school, and she also does rescue and training, said, oh, we have these little rescues. And, and this little one is the last of the bunch. Just and sitting I, there waiting for you. <laughs> I thought, oh, here we go, right? Anyway, I do believe we're all intertwined, and this is definitely a season of signs. Yes. And sometimes we receive the signs through the birds or the bees or the spiders right. and that whatever, the signs, the cardinals, the blue jays, the eagles. Right, right. <clears throat> and sometimes I think that our own beloveds who were on two legs say to our four-leggeds, Go over there right now. Exactly. They need you right now. Absolutely. And I want to be able to say, because I know this for a fact, that when we see other animals, so you see Big Red, when we see other animals, those animals that were ours can enter their body just like we can channel the essence of someone's soul. Yeah. They come in, they visit, there's the hair on my hair standing up and they look at you. And I know that for a fact, because especially with Razzle and Silver, some horses, I white horses, I can look at and it's like, La -da -da. and others is like, Oh, there you are. Yeah. yeah. Because it's in the eye and yeah. it looks at you yeah. and it's for a moment. And it's because they have the space to occupy and visit and say, I love you. Yeah. Well, I remember being out on the boat with Kelly and Kevin this summer. <clears throat> I think, Lily, you may have been there. And all of a sudden, my sadness over the passing of their coda, like it overwhelmed me. And I remember saying to Kelly, see, I get choked up talking about it right in this moment. Looking in Coda's eyeballs was like looking at a sacred being. Yes. Yes. And I think that for for me, the animals are such purity. Yes. And they're here to, to help us. Yeah. For they're whatever innocent. we need help with. And sometimes we don't even know it. Right. They're innocent. They're innocent. And Lily in the chat room is saying, Ralph has done that for me, channeling my Gabriel. Oh, my God. Yes. Lily. Yeah. <sighs> Isn't it wonderful? Yes. It's heartbreaking and wonderful all at the same time. Yes. Yeah. And part of the magic of being aware of spirit is because when we pass and we get these visitations from people, plants, sunrises, sunsets, you know, how many people do you see? How many times do you see animals in the sky? One of the, Grace, who did our wedding, I mean, she lost her little chooch, which was, you know, one of these little wild terriers and just little, little thing, you know, two hands of, of pure joy and terror. 
And when he passed, she said, he hasn't come. He hasn't come. I haven't dreamt of him. He hasn't come. He hasn't come. He hasn't come. And she and I go to Santa Fe and we're in downtown uh, Galisteo where my horses were bred and born. And I look up in the sky and I go, oh, my <laughs> guy, my sky. And I said, look, Grace, look. She went, And there was Chooch, the <laughs> biggest, sassiest dog in the cloud. And she just burst into tears. Yes. Burst into tears. And she just sent me a picture of him on the land that she bought in Arizona. There's some cactus. And she just went, there's Chooch. And sure enough, there's Chooch in this cactus. Isn't that something? And, and, I, and I want to say this because I know we're close to the end, is that when we put Razzle in her grave, the gentleman that picked her up and had the you know, guided her body down into the ground, dug the ground and everything else. And I went down to the ground and took her halter off and, you know, made sure she was just, I kissed her goodbye and climbed back up. And as he puts the first bucket load of grass or, or dirt on her, grass hit her mouth. And I just went, oh my God. And none, no other grass, he just fed her. And I looked up, and in the sky, literally, the cloud was in complete replica, the mirror image of the way Razzle was laying, the way her tail, her hair, her mane, everything. And I just told the, the driver of the machinery, stop, stop, look, look. He stopped it. He got out of the tractor and looked up. He s literally looked at me goes, I do believe Jesus lives here. I've Aww. never seen like this in my life. Wow. I said, I'll take it. I'll take it. Well, on that it's, note. You know, yeah, there you have it, folks. What a beautiful evening. Lily is saying, loved listening with everyone to this amazing conversation. Thank you, ladies, for doing this podcast. Yes. I mean, I didn't know we were going to be here tonight, but we were, I mean, I'm having this conversation, but I want to thank our animals for coming and saying they love us. Yes. And that, you know, we grieve them because their love is so honest. Yes. We yes. don't get the same love from people. It's really that simple. And as I've learned to say, never say never, because after Gabriel, I said, I will never, because it was so awful. And never say never. But sometimes they come back and say, what'd you say? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. When, when I was told, talking? yeah, she's We're a, ch <laughs> well, she's a Chewini rescue. And I took her to see Dr. May and Dr. May said, um, excuse me, but you've just, you've just rescued a Jack Russell Terrier, which oh, I've heard God. twice she now. Said, oh, you've got a Jack Russell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Dog. Exactly. Okay, Sandy, have a beautiful evening. Thank you, you everybody. Thank you, CJ. Okay, good night, everybody. Good Thank night, you. everyone. Happy holidays. Thank you.